All right. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Silvio Tavares. I'm the president and CEO of the Cardlinks Association. And unlike many of the companies that you're going to see here today, Cardlinks is actually a nonprofit association dedicating to promoting the growth of online to offline commerce, fintech, and developing open source software. So to give you context here, um, I'm going to be talking about a new set of open source software APIs that we made available in January, which is going to enable every company in this room to access perhaps the most valuable data set in digital commerce. So I'm going to talk about that more in a moment. If you look up on the slides here right now, you will see the member companies of the Cardlinks Association. Many of the companies in this room are members. It includes the largest merchants in the world, the largest tech platforms in the world, and the largest issuers of payment cards. And they work together on something that is very important, and this is the topic for today, which is shopping. Shopping is really important because it makes us feel good to get something new, a new pair of shoes, um, lunch, dinner. Actually, let me just get a quick show of hands here. Yesterday, how many of you used a credit card or a debit card to purchase something? Maybe there's an Uber, your hotel, um, lunch. Did anyone not do that? OK, so 100%. Everybody here used their card. Um, just to give you a sense of how important commerce is, uh, not just in making us feel good and letting us buy things, it's really important driver of our economy. Um, what uh, you see up here is the per capita GDP income for the three largest economies, three of the largest economies in the world. So the U.S. there you can see has 59,000, uh, approximately $59,000 per capita. Japan, which is the third largest economy, has 39,000 per capita, and uh, the European Union has 33,000. Um, I did it per capita because if you think about the size of each one of those economies, those are gigantic numbers. The U.S. economy is $14 trillion per year. Japan is somewhat smaller at $4 trillion, and the European Union is $12 trillion. But more important than the overall size of the economy is how much of the economies are made up of shopping, consumer spending. Look at these numbers. In the US, 70% of the economy is made up of shopping, using those credit cards. Japan, 60% of the economy. And in the European Union, 56%. So the key point here is shopping, consumer spending, is relevant to every company in the room. It quite simply is the biggest market for any company in the world. It's really big. But as all of us know, shopping is changing quite dramatically. And what I've shown here are just headlines just from the beginning of the year here, um, talking about how shopping is changing. J.C. Penney, which is one of the most well-known names in American retailing, announcing they're going to shut 140 of their bricks and mortar stores. Next one, Macy's. Uh, the flagship is just up the street here, up on uh, 32nd and 5th Avenue. This is the CEO on CNBC announcing they're going to shut 100 of their stores over the next year. And then right here you see Amazon. They're opening 2,000 stores. Now, any of you guys have kids? You guys remember that old Sesame Street song? One of these things is not like the other. One of these things does not belong. How is it that Amazon is opening 2,000 stores at the same time that Macy's is closing 100, JCPenney is closing 140? And I could go on and on. Well, the difference that Amazon has, the key competitive advantage that they have is data. And increasingly, consumers are starting their shopping journey online through a variety of mobile and other devices. And they're able to trace the consumer's behavior through cookies and other data sets and actually trace that all the way into the store. That's an advantage that those other companies don't have because 90% of sales for the typical retailer are still done in the store. And they have no idea when that customer walks into their store what they like, where they live, and what they want to buy. So 
The solution for this problem is called card linking. And effectively, what card linking does is it enables you to take that credit card or debit card and link it to a digital device. And then from then on, you're connected at the point of sale. How it look, works is a simple three-step process. Enroll, link, and pay. In the first step, just as I showed you, the consumer takes their existing payment card and links it to a digital account. Since we're in the morning, we're getting, just getting started again. Quick show of hands. How many of you have a credit card or a debit card in your pocket right now? Again, 100%. Wow. I didn't, I didn't give everybody a card before they came in. OK, how many of you have one of these, a mobile device? Again, 100%. So you see here the power. The consumer takes their card and links it to a digital account. This could be their mobile banking app. It could be their Instagram account. Um, it, they get, it get linked. Second step is the consumer sees a targeted ad, and they just activate that ad. You see here, this is an ad for Hilton. Um, this actually happened to me out here. I was, I've been traveling quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, and I saw, I opened up my American Express app, and there was an offer for Hilton, 5% off. Because uh, they could tell, based on my spending history, I was traveling quite a bit, and I was not in my home city of San Francisco. I was in New York. So I just press that button, link, and then I pay. So what we're seeing here is the connection of three different industries, which historically were completely separate. On the left, you've got the online consumer. On the right, you've got the offline merchant. And right in the center, you've got the payments ecosystem. And as I mentioned, the consumer is starting their digital shopping journey in a variety of new ways. It used to be just the desktop. Then we moved to mobile devices. We've got tablets, watches, uh, fitness trackers. Last week, I was actually at BMW headquarters in Munich. They're working on making every BMW a shopping platform. And the reason for that is they see a future where much of the time in our cars, we're not driving them. They're driving themselves. So what are you going to do? Well, the best American pastime. You're going to shop while you're in your car. <laughs> and over the next 10 years, we're going to have over 50 billion internet-connected devices. And every one of those devices is a platform for shopping. But if you think about the typical merchant over on the right-hand side of the page, they just have two simple ways to provide services. 90% of their sales are in the physical store, and the remaining 10% are just delivered through mail. So you see all that complexity of the online consumer not matched by what the merchant is doing. And then finally, you've got payments. You've got to pay. And there are really just three simple ways to pay. Cash, credit card, or debit card, or a mobile wallet. And the challenge is that each one of these three industries historically has operated completely independently. No exchange of data. And the companies that have been able to connect this, companies like Amazon, have been enormously successful and, quite frankly, have left everybody in the dust. So the, the connection point for this is card linking. Once you take that card and link into a digital account, all of a sudden, these things, three things interoperate. So how do you do it? Well, that's the software that we've just released. If you go to cardlinks.org, you and any company in this room can now access a software API that enables you to actually tape, tap into the real-time data stream of the largest payment networks and embed the capability to link the online consumer to the offline merchant. And I'm going to show you how it works. So we're going to go to the cardlinks.org website. And as you can see, all the different types of things that we do, one of the most important is open source software. So I'm going to click on the open source software tab. And immediately, I'm going to get a message from one of our founding members, the Microsoft Corporation, who developed this software to enable all of Microsoft's platforms to connect to the leading payment networks and access that real-time transaction data. And so there are two parts to using this API. One, you have to get authenticated as a legitimate service provider. And in order to do that, you have links here to MasterCard and to Visa. Um, and the other leading payment networks, you can go there and get permission to access into the data stream 
And then after that, every time you enroll a card, you're gonna have to show that the consumer gave consent and the merchant gave consent. So you've got those links on the page. Um, the second part is the actual software code itself. And so what this does is take you to our GitHub repository of the open source, uh, which is also a RESTful API like the pre uh, previous presenters. Um, and you can see here a list of capabilities that enable you to use various aspects of this. I'm just going to show you one. Um, this is the Commerce uh, API. Uh, I'm going to click on that. And you're going to see here all the different capabilities that are available um, for various um, uh, API clients. I'm going to click here on the MasterCard client, um, and then I'm going to click on um, Card Worker, which enables you to enroll a card. And you can see here, you can download the code. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling through, all of the code is very well documented. So very simply put, if you want to access the platform of transactions, which, if you think about it, is one of the most important data sets available out there. The biggest predictor of how someone is going to spend in the future is how they've spent in the past. You have now access to this data. Um, and it's digitized for basically all of the world's spending. Now, um, that's available on our website. And let's go to another uh, split screen for a moment, because I'm going to show you a video of how this works in practice from a merchant's perspective use coupons or loyalty points which requires handing over a special card or physical coupon at checkout. But as we all know, this is cumbersome and a real pain. Well, card linking lets you save time and skip this process altogether. Here's how card linking works. When a consumer links a payment card to a mobile app or loyalty program, they receive their discount or loyalty benefit when they pay with a registered card. No more handing over loyalty cards or clipping coupons. The key thing that the Card Links Association provides to the card linking industry is interoperability. And we do this in three key ways. By our forums, where we're bringing together the leading executives from merchants, digital advertisers, and technology companies. We also do this through our software and our databases. As a merchant, you'll be able to come to our conferences and leverage the technology infrastructure of the leading companies in the world. So the key advantages to becoming a Cardlinks member for a small or medium-sized merchant is number one, access to the leading companies in the world. Secondly, you'll learn the best practices to use in digital marketing to increase your sales. And finally, through the use of card linking technology, you won't be flying blind anymore. You'll be able to trace that online ad to the in-store purchases. And as a result, you'll be able to increase the sales at your business. From a consumer perspective, the key advantage to card linking is simplicity. You walk into a store, you don't need that paper coupon, you don't need that loyalty card, and you don't need a promo code. You just swipe your card and they know you. You'll receive a personalized discount or loyalty benefit that's crafted just for you. To learn more, head to cardlinks.org today. Um, and. Uh... The key here is if you're a bank or an issuer of cards in the audience, um, if you don't have a card linking program, you're missing out on a great way to engage your consumers. Most of the banks here in Manhattan have actually launched card link programs uh, already, about 70% of the top 10 issuers in the US. And this is catching like wildfire across the globe. The leading three banks in Japan have launched programs. The leading three banks in the UK have just come back from Switzerland and Germany. Those banks are launching card link programs. If you're a digital publisher, a digital platform, uh, virtually every major global payment wallet has now launched this capability. And any of you guys here use Yelp? Yeah, a good proportion. I didn't get 100%. Uh, but they have 167 million users. And now every time you open up that Yelp app, you're going to be able to get targeted offers for the restaurant that you want to go to. So this is relevant not just for issuers, but also for the leading uh, tech platforms. Um, and the best part here is you've got a, non, a global nonprofit association dedicated to helping you get started. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much, and we'll get some key questions.
Are we PCI compliant? Is there somebody here from PCI? <laughs> That's the first question. Uh, very, yes, absolutely. Um, and the card linking technology uses tokens for the transmission of what is called in the industry the PAN, personal account number. Um, all of this infrastructure, and this is the reason why it works so effectively, is not only PCI compliant, but tokenized. And so that's a really, really key value part of the proposition. Um, in your opinion, do you see open source taking a regulated role in the US banking as it has in Europe with PSD2? Um, we believe um, that the industry participants should provide self-regulation. Um, uh, one of the principal purposes of having a nonprofit association is actually creating an environment where the key industry participants can develop good hygiene standards, good standards that protect consumer information. So we're not an advocate of um, having uh, government regulation. The purpose of having the Card Links Association is to provide self-regulation. And it's quite interesting, most of my career, I was an executive at the large payments companies. I was SVP and head of the data analytics business for Visa. Very few people realize that Visa has a several hundred million dollar business selling data to banks. Prior to that, I was an SVP at First Data, um, running their data analytics business. First Data is the largest payments processor in, in the US with over $13 billion in annual revenues. And what I realized working at both of those companies is it's really important to have collaboration around security and interoperability. And that's how we established the Card Links Association three years ago in San Francisco. And from the starting point with three companies, we've now grown um, to serving over 13 different countries and over 100 of the largest global companies, all based on collaboration and creating standards. Um, one last question. How, do, um, how, how is this different from PayPal, Visa, Checkout, or ShopRunner? Very critical question, and thank you whoever asked that. Visa, uh, uh, Checkout, ShopRunner, and PayPal are all targeted at e-commerce transactions, which I said it, I've said it before, how, what proportion uh, of total transactions are e-commerce transactions? Was anyone listening? 10%. So only 10% of that $10 trillion in consumer spending is e-commerce. The remaining 90% is in store and are not addressed by those checkout uh, vehicles. So this is about making the 90% of purchases that occur in store traceable to where the consumer started the shopping journey, which is online. And that's what's different about this. It targets a much, much larger market. So I'm out of time. I really thank you for your uh, time and attention engagement. I'll be out afterwards. I look forward to uh, meeting some of you today. Thank you very much.